Hi, this is Janos, it's Reverb Audio, and finally I'm answering Hugo's comment. And uh, I've been meaning to answer this for about a week or so. Um, so here we go. Hi Janos, you speak about double pi power filtering. This will increase the sagging of the power supply considerably. And he mentioned that because I was talking about uh, the pi supplies. So it means that you have a choke and then you have a capacitor. And that's the basic filtering unit when you filter power the old school way, so the hard way. And most of the time it's associated with uh, vacuum tube gear, but you can also do that for your DAX and uh, solid state gear as well and uh, it will lead to a very different kind of sound and usually people don't do that with most solid state gear because there you can get very fast power only when the resistance in the power supply is little and when you add the choke there it's going to have a significant resistance so it's going to increase the sag uh, there but with tube amplifiers we have a much higher supply voltage so it means that they are charging way faster than the low voltage solid state uh, supplies so there you can get away with uh, with higher impedance in the choke and also when you have a choke the choke is not just uh, something that provides impedance and slows the the charging of the capacitor but the chokes also store voltage so they also behave as a storage device. So basically when your device needs voltage, they can provide voltage. And tubes, vacuum tubes, they primarily run on voltage. So what they need when, when, when the signal is going up and down, they need from the supply to get back that voltage that they lost or compensate for that uh, that they lost or compensate for that extra higher voltage that the supply needs to just shunt away that, that voltage. And that's what a choke can do. And, and when you have that double pi filter, what happens there, because you have two uh, filter stages, you also double the impedance of the supply and you slow down the time to, to charge your final capacitor bank that supplies your power tube. So why on earth was I doing that for the Darling amplifier, especially uh, for the pure darling which I recommend as a as a higher level as a better build so why I am recommending something that has a slower power supply and uh, compared to the baby darling where I just recommended a CRC filter there's just a resistor and and another capacitor there or, or maybe just one one choke supply but if you just use a single resistor there then, then the resistance is going to be similar or higher than what you do with the double pi filter, the resistance of the double pi filter. So even though it's two pi filters, it's going to be still faster than a CRC filter supply, uh, where you need a high value resistor to cut down the noise. And when you have a high value resistor, it just cuts down the signal and it, it is unable to supply voltage. So when we have the, the pi filter or double pi filter, even though the charging speed from the transform, I mean the power transformer is, is slowed down, but the, the, the choke has the ability to supply that instantaneous voltage anyway. So that's why if you look at just like the current speed and the charging speed, it just tells you half of the story because the second half of the story is the interaction with the, uh, with the voltage department and, uh, and, and the way how you can uh, minimize the damage done by the two pi filters versus one only in the power supply for the amplifier is to minimize the uh, impedance, the resistance, the DCR of the chokes. So you need to have big chokes. So that's why if you put baby tiny mini chokes and you put two of them, it's going to be a really, really bad idea. It's like, you, I recommend two chokes, but lower, as low DCR as possible. And, and you can tremendously speed up the power supply if you get uh, uh, much lower DCR chokes there. 
if you can get like DCR10 chokes, like 10 ohm or less, but uh, that, that will give you like the tremendous speed and trem really, really astonishing uh, sound. Like that's like immediacy, impactness, uh, that, that you don't hear virtually from anything. Uh, but the price for that to pay is, uh, is like this big choke each, like, like 10 kilogram choke each. And uh, of course, that's uh, kind of uh, very hard to, to get. And wh what I am recommending for the Darling build is not how to build the best amplifier in the universe, <laughs> because that's going to cost you infinite amount of money, an infinite amount of space in your room. But I recommend this Darling project as a realistic working compromise. And, and you can improve on it in many, many ways. So, so these I do not give to you as something that is chewed, pre-digested, and you just put together without any thoughts. I, I give these Darling projects, the Baby Darling and its upgraded version, as, as an exercise, as a learning tool that you build for yourself, you have fun with it, you enjoy the process, and, and then you have feedback. How, how do you like the sound? And, and I recommend the double pi filter for the Pure Darling because I recommend this build for higher level loudspeaker. When you have a really efficient loudspeaker, when you have an extremely resolving system, so it has the power to resolve low level details. And when you have that, then you, I would say, uh, you, you need double pi filter for a single ended amplifier. I mean, for my needs, my needs. Why is that? Because when you have only a single pi filter, then you have a lot of residual hum in your supply. And, and a lot of people are okay with that, but as your uh, efficiency of the speakers keeps improving, then this residual hum like, for example, if I don't hear any residual hum with, uh, with my void pipes, but if, if I hug, uh, I mean, like, <laughs> hook up, not hug up, hook up, hook up the, uh, the Altex, and then it, oh, it, it gives me a hum. And uh, mm, it, I could still live with it, it's fine. But the Darling amplifier, I, I, I recommended these amps not to be a generic amplifier, but to be an amplifier for late, light, late night listening. You can also use them as a generic amplifier, but uh, you will notice that the, the, the power output is not enough to make them compete like if you want to have like rock festivals or anything. It's not designed for that. It can do it to a certain degree, provided the right set of speakers, small enough room, you listening only, not a party of a hundred. So, but you have to exercise caution, intelligence and realistic expectations for that. And then you will have a solution that it's, it's fun and you can learn from it. But it, it won't be the world's best and it won't be able to compete with the sound pressure level that an ongaku can, can reproduce or something like that. But of course, the Onga who cannot compete with the cost of the Darling either. So there is a give and take. However, where any amplifier in the world will have trouble competing with is late night listening experience with ultra efficient loudspeakers. So if that's a thing that you have like really low no noise floor in your home, so you don't have like AC busting, uh, cars, everything, late night, everything is quiet, hush, hush. You have very efficient loudspeakers and you listen to it and then it will just blow your mind to the end of the universe and beyond infinity. However, to be able to do that, you need the Pi filter because you need that low level of, uh, of power supply noise to allow you to reach to that uh, below 10 dB level, like, like the zero dB noise floor compared to like, like zero dB noise floor. That, that's what I'm going for, like that low level, like, like drop it below 10 dB or, or even to minus negative dBs. 
to such levels that if you have an ultra efficient loudspeaker, you put your ear on the membrane and you can't hear the amp is on. That's quiet enough and that will give you, I think that's how you can get the most out of the Darling because it's, it's less than one watt and its strength will be in the milliwatt, in the microwatt region and to be able to fully utilize the benefit of the microwatts and nanowatts, the, the billionth of a watt. So when you do a late night listening, then it's the billionth of a watt that will carry most of uh, the cues that you are listening to. And if you have a single pie filter, you are not going to get that region. And what you also mentioned, choke input supply. Yes, that gives you the, uh, the most potential for the music, but that gives you the worst power supply filtering. If you have like just a single choke input, no capacitor and a cap after that, so a single Pi filter choke input, that's going to give you such loud hum level that the ultra efficient or high efficient speakers are completely out of the picture with a single ended amplifier because even a low efficiency loudspeaker will hum like crazy. So that type of solution is exclusively in the domain of uh, push-pull amplifiers, I would say. But even with the push-pull, uh, that, that's too noisy for me. So I'm using push-pull amps, the Ampexes, for the uh, voice of line salot, which are like 100 plus dB efficient. And I have a full Pi filter for the push-pull. So it's like cap, choke, cap. <laughs> and, uh, and it's a beefier supply, it gives you a quieter signal than most people use for single-ended. But that's what I noticed, that that's what I need for uh, even for push-pull with ultra-efficient speakers to get that the finest sound floor. Without that you are not getting the finest sound floor. And that's my contribution with the Pure Darling to give you the opportunity to hear that ultra-low sound floor, what it is because that's something unknown, completely unknown to the almost entirety of the audiophile world. And, um, and as you said, when it's a choke input supply, it means that it's drawing, uh, it, it's really not drawing current from the, from the power transformer, that's the capacitor that's doing it. So when you have the capacitor after the rectifier, it, it's current hungry and it pulls current from the transformer. And, and the bigger the capacitor, the more greedily it grabs for the current. And what it does is that during the cycle, when, when the power rises, uh, the higher the capacitor, the narrower part of the cycle is drawing the current. So, it's, so the bigger capacitor you have on the input, the more it's going to stress out your power transformer. So that's why uh, that... Uh, uh, approach that people put like 500 microfarad after the rectifier is, is really bad because it's, it stresses the living fudge out of your power transformer. So what's, what, what the transformer is doing is that most of the part time when, when it's, it's getting the power it does nothing and when it's getting at the peak then it's just, <laughs> it, it just the, 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 the capacitor forces 90% of the current out of it during a fraction of the duty cycle. And, and it, it also gets the, the rectifier to ring, the transformer to ring, to, and there, I mean the rectifier to block real hard because there's like a giant inrush of current and then a hard block. Giant inrush, hard block. The whole thing is ringing like a bell. It's, it's like getting a really big mallet and bang, bang, whacking the wall. And when you have a, a, a choke input supply, then it's drawing voltage across the entire duty cycle of, of the transformer when, when it's feeding the voltage, it's, it's constantly feeding it into the choke. And, and the choke just feeds as much as the transformer gives. It does not, uh, does not demand like tremendous amounts of current, it just soaks up the voltage. Whatever voltage is coming, it's soaking it up. And then from that choke, that capacitor which is after that, it can uh, soak up the current from the choke. And, and that's why those 
supplies are so much better because they don't make your power transformer to ring and they are gentle on your rectifier. So why I am not doing that for my Pure Darling? Actually, I'm doing that. But I'm doing that in a special way. And what is my special way? That's in the next video. So thank you, Hugo, for this wonderful technical question. Bye-bye.